Hello everyone and welcome to this CNCF webinar and today I'm excited to introduce Cubescape 3.0 which is a significant advancement in open source Kubernetes security posture management and let's dive into what makes this release so special. So before we get started, a quick introduction. My name is Gal Ghibli and I'm the open source product manager at Armo and I'm deeply involved in the development of Cubescape and I also have a background in DevOps for a few years. So feel free to connect me um, on LinkedIn and I'm always open to have a, a conversation. What's our agenda for today? So our agenda for today includes an in-depth introduction to Cubescape 3.0. We are going to have also a live demo for the CLI um, a detailed look at some highlights of uh, Cubescape 3.0 and some information about what's coming next, which is very important also. So Cubescape 3.0. Cubescape 3.0 represents a significant leap in the Kubernetes security posture management. It leverages automation tools to identify and resolve security misconfigurations and compliance issues across all Kubernetes components. And today we'll be exploring its new additions, including scan results as CRDs, uh, CVE scanning from CLI, comprehensive vulnerability results, and much, much more. So a quick intro to Cubescape and its history. Cubescape was launched in 2021 as a tool for validating um, a cluster against the NSA hardening guidance. It was released, uh, it was issued just a month earlier. Um, fast forward to 2022, Cubescape is the leading open source project for Kubernetes security, and it was accepted as a, a CNCF sandbox project. Fast forward again to 2023, and here we are now. So what we will do next is I'll walk you through a live demo um, showcasing how these new features work in real time and how they can be uh, for a, as a benefit for your Kubernetes security posture. Let's start with the in-cluster component, which will lead us ahead in this demo. So following um, this documentation, we are going to install the Cubescape in-cluster component. You may notice that um, you may notice that at the end of the snippet, I have the uh, set capabilities argument, and this is used to determine which capabilities that we talked about before would be enabled or disabled according to your needs. Uh, so you can enable or disable, uh, for instance, configuration scan or node scan and the uh, reachability and many more capabilities. So let's start with the in-cluster component, which will lead us ahead in this demo. So following this documentation, we're going to install uh, the Cubescape in-cluster component. And you may see that in this code snippet, I have the set, capa set capabilities uh, continuous scan to enable. And this is used to determine which capabilities will be enabled or disabled according to your needs, as we talked before about the capabilities. So you can enable or disable configuration scan, node scan, reachability, and many more capabilities. So after I've installed the in-cluster component and the first scan was already done for me as I set the scan capability to enable, I can now view the results fairly easy using the following commands. For instance, let's look at the list of workload configuration summaries. So if I run this command, I get the full list of all the configuration summaries objects that I now have using Cubescape. And let's say that I want to examine uh, this one specifically. So I'm going to look at the detailed view of this um, workload configuration scan. So I can just take this, put it right here, add the namespace. and I get the full report of uh, that workload 
including all the all the uh, controls that ran against this workload and of course what is the result if it's passed or in this instance uh, failed the same can be done with the vulnerability manifest summaries um, in order to take some of the um, detailed views so I can just get this put this right here at the namespace with and just go to describe and I will get a detailed view of this specific image uh, vulnerability scan so I have too high I have 50 low and so on and so on so you see that how, how easy it is uh, for open source users now to consume the info that Cubescape collects without building and maintaining your own dashboards. So that's the, the first thing that I would like to show you. Moving on, we are going to talk um, about the Cubescape 3.0 CLI version. So I'm going to install it with the command right here. And I'm going to run this. Now I want to start, start with uh, showing you the new looks of the uh, reports provided by Cubescape. So um, it's very easy to get, uh, to get using uh, with Cubescape scan. So the Cubescape scan command will now run and scan against my uh, current context cluster. I have um, a cluster up and running with uh, Kubernetes Goat, which is a deliberately, deliberately um, vulnerable project on that cluster. So as soon as the scan is finished, um, I actually want to focus for a second on this last part um, right here. Yeah this last part right here, which is actually the what now section. So here it's, it's important to say that we not only uh, provide you with lots of data, we also want to suggest what are the next steps that you should take in order to get your cluster um, to the highest security level to improve your security posture. So you can scan um, a specific workload, you may scan images, or you may scan for specific controls to get more information about how this control affects your uh, environment. Now, scrolling up just a bit, we see the high stake workloads, which are actually the workloads that Cubescape identified as the most riskiest in your environment. So in terms of prioritization, you should start with those workloads first. And the easy way is just run the command offered by Cubescape and go over the results. It's like so easy, right? So now imagine that you implement these capabilities in a CI pipeline and including the image scanning using the Cubescape CLI or even implementing um, an easy to use GitHub action that we also provide. So it makes things a lot easier to set gates and uh, fail the pipeline if something doesn't look right in terms of vulnerabilities, controls, compliance, and so on. And this is the result. This is the uh, scan for that specific workload that you, we just um, asked for. So we have the controls, different controls that failed on this, on this workload, and also the summary of the vulnerabilities for that workload. And if you want to run and scan this specific image, we can do it with this command right here. Again, the what's next is very uh, a very important uh, step. So let's see what else this report has to say about our security posture. So you can see right here, I have the compliance score according to NSA and uh, MITRE. And you can see at the top that we've divided the controls into sections. So it will be easier to spot the issues in every section. So uh, we have the controls for workloads level. We have the network level, the control plane. So we cover what you need to know. And uh, each one of these also has a verbose mode uh, 
uh, to see more detailed results every time. I can also run a specific control um, scan using Cubescape scan control and it will show me this control for my entire environment. And of course, we also preserved the, um, the easy to use command in order to scan for a specific framework like the NSA, the Mitre, and uh, the CIS if you want to. So we were talking about scanning images and I want to show you how easy that is right now. So you just use the Cubescape scan image and the image name and you will get a report for that image with all the vulnerabilities on it. So um, you can see right here the full table. I have this amount of critical, which is three um, for this components and this version. And it was also fixed in that version. So we're also letting you know what version you should upgrade to. Uh, so we have in total 137 vulnerabilities. And these are the most vulnerable, vulnerable um, components in my environment. I can also go for the verbose mode and I will get even more information but it doesn't end here you can also use the uh, github action to scan your images as well so i encourage you to do that so talking about cubescape 3.0 let's put on the the highlights and dive into the key highlights of uh, cubescape 3.0 so in cubescape 3.0 we focused on two main areas the first is the addition of functionality and the second is actually improving the user experience, which is very, very important to us. And all of this with the goal of making security a more appealing chore for DevOps engineers and something that becomes ingrained in the development processes for engineers, which results in a more secure Kubernetes installation. So what do we have here? So we have the new uh, configuration scan results, which are stored in cluster. So we made it possible to store uh, scan results in cluster, enhancing visibility and ongoing security management, of course. Um, Cubescape can now scan the running clusters in two ways with uh, an in-cluster agent installed via a Helm chart or um, uh, as opposed to an agent-free which uses uh, the command line, which is the second option. And in previous versions, the results, uh, the result data from the in-cluster scans was only available to be sent to the ARMO service, to the ARMO platform. Now, now what we've added is um, easily available to all open source users without the chore of building and maintaining your own dashboard. So in Cubescape 3.0, we added an in-cluster storage for the scanned results. And with Cubescape in-cluster in components um, installed, you also get that in-cluster storage. So you'll be able to see your scan results in uh, configuration scan summary and workload configuration scan summary, for instance. Uh, these are two objects, two new objects. We also added the vulnerability scanning in the CLI and also in the in-cluster. So in, in previous versions of Cubescape, uh, it supported vulnerability scanning inside the cluster only. So what we've done is we've brought this uh, feature to the Cubescape command line in 3.0 and actually bringing our image scanning to the command line unlocks many great use cases. So you can uh, scan a manifest file in the CI pipeline and you can flag or reject it based on the number um, and class of the vulnerabilities in the containers that will be installed. You can also use the CLI to scan um, an individual individual image and get an output in the same JSON format as the in-cluster objects. A new, a new key feature that we uh, released is the new scan modes. So we have introduced a new cluster baseline security scan which actually performs some key security checks and then shows you the number of resources which have certain permission. So you are then able to take uh, to set up a risk acceptance rules to allow those things which are deliberately installed 
um, or configured about your cluster. So for example, uh, malware in a cluster will often attempt to create a cluster admin role or a role with permissions that approximates it. Um, so with Kubescape baseline scan, you can identify which roles you have installed that should have these permissions and then easily see or be notified when the configuration changes from your security uh, baseline change. Another cool thing is the capabilities based, um, the capabilities, capabilities based in cluster installation. So with our new Helm, uh, with our new in cluster features, we've made it easy to enable and disable them in our Helm chart. So you can make configuration scanning, vulnerability scanning, uh, reachability, which former known as uh, the relevancy, uh, and the node scanner, the node agent in the uh, values.yaml file. So it's, it's a more flexible and customizable installation process, which is tailored for uh, your needs. So in conclusion, Cubescape 3.0 is a major release, but our journey doesn't end here. We're already looking ahead to Cubescape 3.1 and well beyond. So throughout the, the rest of the year, uh, we'll be focusing on completing our compliance and vulnerability scanning roadmap. And this includes introducing an in-cluster UI for enhanced visualization of all your uh, saved results that we just talked about. And it's going to make it even easier to manage and understand your Kubernetes security posture and much, much more. So as a wrap up, um, I want to say, uh, I want to emphasize that your feedback and ideas are incredibly valuable to us. And I want to tell you that we also uh, hold community meetings on Zoom on the first Tuesday of every month at 2 p.m. GMT. And we'd love to see you there because your insights help us continually improve Cubescape. And that's very important for us. So a big thank you to all our contributors. Uh, your efforts make Cubescape better with each release. If you're interested in, in contributing, please check out our GitHub for more information on how to join uh, the Cubescape community. And I really encourage you to check out our new release and share your thoughts on the Cubescape channel on the uh, CNCF Slack. So we're excited to see how it will enhance your Kubernetes security management. And I would like to thank you very much for listening today.